to our online Sunday celebration. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. May God bless all of you. Hi, Tap family. Welcome home. We can't wait to see everyone right here at the Tap. I got some good news for you, but I won't tell you until we go inside. All right? And you know what? We're a church that loves pursuing the presence of God. So let's go inside and let's get ready to join in and worship. Worship together in your family, at home, but with all of us all over the city and all over the world at the same time. Let's go church. Good morning church. I hope you're all excited to experience the great things that God has done over our lives. So let's all open our hearts, our voices and praise his name this morning.
Hey kids, don't forget to join us today at 6 p.m. for an exciting TSS program brought to you by our very own TSS teachers. Don't miss out. See you all there. And we want to thank you all for your generosity in giving. You may use the options below as you continue to give to Lord Jesus. May God bless each one of you. Hey TAP family, I got some great news for you. You know what? We're going to start meeting and our first day of meeting will be on the 12th of July right here at the Colombo Gospel Tabernacle. I can't wait to see you. We'll give you some ideas about how we're going to meet and what we're going to do in the days ahead. But look forward to it. Keep the 12th of July and let's make sure to be here. We will join together as a family. Now, I've got even better news for you. You know why? Because we have a wonderful preacher who's going to share God's word with us. He's a guy that, has been, that is known uh, in Sri Lanka among the Christians as well as the non-Christians. And we're so glad to have Dr. Ajit Fernando with us today. You know what? He is mentoring so many people. He is uh, mentoring the leaders in YFC and he's also mentoring pastors around Sri Lanka as well. And he's been a tremendous blessing. I know Tab family, you love to hear from him. So we want to make sure to have people like Dr. Ajit and others and they'll be a blessing to us. So would you do this? Would you press those emojis and say, hey, welcome, welcome Dr. Ajit. And we want to welcome him to share God's word with us. Shall we do that? Press those emojis and let's welcome Dr. Ajit. Fernando. Press, press. Thank you, Pastor uh, Roger. That's the most unique introduction I've had in all my years of preaching. <laughs> I'm very happy to be with you again. And uh, I thought I'd speak to you from Paul. Uh, you know, in the Bible, Paul presents himself as a father uh, to the churches that he was uh, pastoring, that he helped found. And by looking at him as a father, we can learn a lot of things about family life. Uh, and that, that's what I'm hoping to do today. Uh, just look at uh, the first chapter of Philippians and see some of the features of a spiritual father, of a real family, from looking at that passage. So uh, the first thing I want to say is that Paul prayed for his family for his people so in verses 3 and 4 of chapter 1 of Philippians Paul says I thank my God in all my remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now uh, in 10 out of the 13 epistles of Paul you find him saying I pray for you for his spiritual child, Timothy, he says in 2 Timothy 1.3 that he prays night and day for Timothy. So we pray for our family members. Perhaps it's the most important thing that we can do for them. Um, Paul, for Timothy, he says night and day. And I suppose that uh, Timothy was his special child in the faith. And we can do that too. Uh, as our, uh, during our regular prayer time, we can pray for our children and for our spouses and then and for our siblings. And then when we know that they are doing something today, for example, my son is going for an interview today. Lord, be with him. Lord, help him. So we, we go through the day with these people who are so close to us in our prayers. You know, sometimes we can't talk to our children about God. They have rejected God. But we can always talk to God about our children. And we can pray for them. And I, I, I'm convinced that possibly prayer is the most important thing that we can do for our families. So let's look at some of the things that Paul prayed about. I just want to focus on one aspect. And that is celebrating and affirming family members. Celebrating and affirming family members. So let's look at verse 3 uh, and uh, 4 and chapter 4 and verse 1 where he talks about 
a longing, thankful, joyful attitude towards his spiritual children. Verse 3, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Whenever I remember you, I thank God. Paul was a person who delighted in people. In eight of his 13 letters, he says that when he prays, he thanks God for those he prays for. So in chapter 4, in verse 4 of chapter 1, he says, Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy. So he thanks God and he is joyful. Uh, and then in chapter 4 and verse 1, he says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I long for, my joy and my crown. I think our family members must know that when they come home, they are welcome. They are, they are considered a blessing. The parents, the brothers, the sisters are happy to see them coming home. When I walked into your church, uh, the first thing that I saw was, welcome home. That's a beautiful thought. And that's how our children must feel, our, our husbands, our wives must feel. When they come home, they are welcome, they are appreciated. So, Paul is thankful, he considers them his joy and his crown. In fact, I was able to, I don't know, there may be more, but I was able to find 21 times in Paul's epistles where he praises people. 21 times. See, Praise is a key Christian discipline. That's why we are asked to praise God. Now, one of the reasons why we are asked to praise God is so that uh, we can bring glory to Him. That's one of the reasons. But there's another. Praise is what completes joy. You know, when you appreciate a good deed, you truly complete the joy of that good deed. So, joy is a very important Christian value. You know, Christians are people who pursue joy. Uh, in, uh, in the Old Testament, there are 27 different words for joy. You know, uh, I, I tried to make a count of Sinhalese and I got my Tamil friends to make a count of Tamil. And I think we came up with about 15 words in our language. But in the Old Testament, 27 different words for joy. You know, in our, uh, in our South Asian culture, uh, we are very uh, profuse in our public praise of people, especially when we are before a mic. You know, we really say some wonderful things about people. However, um, at home, with our colleagues, very little praise. It's almost, uh, they, you know, we say, oh, they know, they, they surely they, are, they know that we appreciate them. We don't express it verbally. Now, that's an unbiblical uh, lifestyle. Um, you know, when we were students, uh, there was a fa famous preacher uh, and a writer called Charlie Shedd. And I was in a seminary when he came and to speak in our chapel. Uh, and that it so happened that it was his 25th wedding anniversary and his wife was there. And he said something that I never forgot. He said, I have a practice of complimenting my wife, praising my wife for something every day. And every week, I look for something new to praise her for. That's part of the Christian lifestyle. Uh, so, um, um, uh, especially during festivals, praise and joy are an important part of a Christian festival in the Old Testament. Um, one of the important um, uh, times of a festival was when the family ate together. And in Deuteronomy 16, three times we are told that they must be joyful. And once it says, altogether joyful. Uh, so I think uh, we, as leaders of our families, must labor to make our meal time a meaningful time. Uh, that's a very important time when they are affirmed, when they can talk about their problems, when they can enjoy each other. So we need to take our meal times very seriously. The Bible does. And it asks us 
uh, during, especially during uh, the, the, uh, the festivals. Now, um, first of course, in, when, when it comes to appreciation, praise and joy, husband and wife appreciate each other. You know, it's amazing. In the Bible, there is a whole book where the husband praises the wife and the wife praises the husband. I think sometimes we are so embarrassed by it that we say it's entirely about our relationship with God. Now, that's a very good example of how to have a relationship with God. So I think it's valid to use the Song of Solomon as an example of our relationship with God. But the primary purpose of this book was to talk about the relationship between husband and wife and how they praise each other, the shape of their nose, the shape of their neck, what they wear. They appreciate, they have meditated about their spouse and they express their meditation in terms of words in that book. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 9 says, Enjoy the wife whom you love. So it's a an, uh, an command in the Bible to enjoy the wife whom we love. Proverbs 5.18 talks about older people. It's talking to older people and it says, rejoice in the wife of your youth. Now you're old too, but you rejoice in the uh, wife of your youth. Deuteronomy 26 and verse 11, where, where, where it's talking to families and the families are urged Rejoice in the good that God has done. So we are a people who are committed to joy. And we want to see, we work to make sure that our homes are places of joy. You know, uh, I, I don't know whether you remember that time. Some of you weren't even born. Uh, in 1989, where we had this uh, revolution and uh, things were really tough. There were no buses traveling and it was a really tough time. I had just returned from the States uh, after a sabbatical and it was a heavenly sabbatical for me. I learned how to type, how to use a computer. I wrote two books. I taught a course, did a lot of preaching. Uh, all the things I like to do, I was able to do. Came back to Sri Lanka. I had to spend three hours a day in order to keep our office open, just going and picking these people up because buses are not traveling. And I was getting very frustrated. Around that time, the school where I had spent my sabbatical wrote and said, our faculty has unanimously decided to invite you to join the faculty. And you can spend so much time studying, you can spend so much time writing, you teach a, a limited amount of time, the, the rest of the time you can do what you want. It was like a dream job. But it so happened that we knew, my wife and I knew, that we have been called to Sri Lanka and nothing is going to change that. And so, uh, the next day I wrote and said, I'm honored by the invitation, but I'm not coming. But later on, my wife and I uh, were, were chatting to each other and we said, all these people are leaving the country and they say it's because of the children. Now, we have to have a reason for staying for the sake of the children because the children didn't have a call to Sri Lanka. We are the ones who were called to Sri Lanka. And we decided that the one thing that we can give our children at this time, difficult time, that, 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 that could be like a blessing to them, was a happy home. We'll somehow try to keep our home happy. So, we, our homes are celebrating, uh, honoring, praising, thanking, joyful places. Now let me say that if you are to be, have a happy home, you must be a happy person. Right? Uh, if you are not a happy person, you can't have a happy home. Paul was looking at the Philippians with joy because that's how God looked at the Philippians. So, what I want to say is that we are happy people because God is happy with us. God looks at us with joy. That's the heart of the joy of the Lord. It's knowing that God enjoys us, loves us, 
is joyful over us. Um, uh, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in the Psalms and in the Proverbs, I was able to find 11 times we are, we are told that God delights in us or is pleased with us. You know, we are asked to delight in God. We are asked to delight in the word. Uh, we, we remember that from the Psalms. But sometimes we forget that the Bible also says that God delights in us. Isaiah 62 and verse 4 says that uh, it uses the marriage metaphor to talk about how God uh, delights in us like a bridegroom delights in his bride. Uh, it says, you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married for the Lord delights in you. Uh, you know, um, uh, one of the great verses on joy is Zephaniah 3.17. We sing it as a song. Uh, it says, the Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. You know, that's, the name, that's, the, the, that's how it starts. But it says, he will delight over you with gladness. And then it says, he will exult over you with loud singing. Um, uh, in other words, God is shouting for joy over us. Uh, you know, one of the words used here in this pa passage, I looked at the, the Hebrew dictionary and it said, it means to shriek ecstatically. You know, shrieking ecstatically. Um, I'll never forget a day in 1996 when I was seated with my family watching TV. It was the finals of the World Cup cricket. And then we won. And our whole house burst into screams of joy. And I don't think the neighbors were all that worried because they must have been doing the same thing. It's a joy shrieking ecstatically. And to think that God approaches us like that. When you're thrilled about being loved, you are a happy person. When you know that you are loved like this. So let me say that to have a happy home, you must be a happy person. Now let me also say that it's not uh, uh, automatic. You know, I have, I, I think one of the biggest challenges I have had in the ministry of discipling is convincing people that God really loves them. They find it so difficult. There are, there are blocks. So we need to deal with issues that hinder joy. Deal with those issues. Such as, you know, I have, a, I have made a list here. Um, let's go get on to the next slide. Um, um, I ha uh, it says, uh, a, the uh, a theology of works or slavery. You know, you think that Christianity is, I must do this, I must do this, I must do this. Uh, Paul says, that's not Christianity. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yes, righteousness is important. But more important is the joy of living with God. It could be unconfessed sin. Uh, there was a pastor whose wife found that... Uh, he was all the time scolding her. And after some time, she realized this has got very serious because when he started preaching, he would be scolding the congregation. So they decided that they need to go and get some help from a, uh, from a senior pastor. And the senior pastor writing about this incident says that when the couple came, the husband uh, faced, to the problem, faced up to the problem like a real man. He blamed it all on his wife. But they kept talking. And a little later, the real story came out. This guy, before he got married, uh, went to Korea. It was during the Korean War in the 1950s. He went to Korea. And then he had two, uh, as a soldier. And uh, they have two weeks of R&R. Uh, uh, &R, uh, but, you know, those days you couldn't come back all the way just for two weeks to the States. So he went to Tokyo 
for his rest and recuperation. And he was alone, feeling very lonely, and he fell into sin several times with a prostitute. And he came back after that to marry the girl who had been waiting for him to come back. And then he went into his chosen profession. But he had not forgiven himself. He was angry. He was upset with himself. And that anger was expressing itself in his anger towards others. And that day God healed him. He was able to receive God's forgiveness, receive to, to forgive himself, and to receive his wife's forgiveness, and be cleared. So there are some people with blocks like that. There is, uh, sometimes it's unforgiven wrong done to you, that you find difficult to get out of your system. You know, a lot of people give honor to those who hurt them that they don't deserve. God is the most influential in our life. And, and God is bigger than all the bad people, all the bad that people have done to us. But we, we live with this burden. It's become part of our identity. They did this to me. They did this to me. They did this to me. And we are honoring people who don't deserve honor. God is greater than all those who hurt us. And so um, that is another uh, unforgiving wrong. Uh, it could be un unresolved conflicts at home. You know, when, when you have a conflict and don't, don't face up to it, 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 it is, it, it's eating inside of you and it takes away our joy. It, it may be wounds that need to be healed. You know, people have done bad things to us and sometimes those, those are heavy, deep wounds and they need to be healed. It could be just the baggage of being rejected. Parents rejected me, my school rejected me, my boss rejected me, and that shapes our identity. I am a rejected person. Well, I want to challenge you. Get help. Grapple with this. This is an urgent need. God wishes for you to be a joyful person. And not only is it urgent for you, it's urgent for others because invariably, if you're not a joyful person, you're going to hurt others. So God loves you. Battle to accept that. It's the truth. I know it's in the heart, in the, in the head. But sometimes the journey from the head to the heart is several miles long. Make that journey and let you realize that God truly loves you. Okay, so um, uh, Paul rejoiced and and had joy in them. Now, not only did he have joy over them, he had confidence in them. This brings us to verse 6. He says, I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ. He had confidence in them. Uh, actually, it was not in them. It was in God's grace in them. He will do it. He will bring it to completion. So, if we, wa if, if we want in our homes, we can always focus on all the dangers, on the obstacles, on the pitfalls, on the weaknesses. We can focus entirely on that. We need to do that. But that is not the overwhelming thing that drives our homes. See, that attitude can get communicated. We can focus on the possibilities or we can focus on the possibilities of grace. That encourages to believe, people to believe, I can make it. God is going to help me. I can make it. Um, Pastor and I and our spouses, we were at a retreat some months ago with Cassie Carsten, uh, who founded uh, The World Needs a Father. And um, one of the things I learned at that uh, retreat was that young children learn more from affirmation than from rebuke. Now, it's very important to rebuke children. That's, that's an aspect of parenting that's very important. But he says they learn more when we affirm something that was very good. That does more to their will than even rebuke does. So we need to balance scolding with affirmation. And you see that both in the epistles of Paul. 
Even when we rebuke, even when we charge, we do so with affirmation. Paul in 1 Timothy 1.18 tells Timothy, Timothy, I give you this charge, strong word. I give you this command. It's a military term. I give you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. In other words, he's giving him a command, but it's in order, it's in order to fulfill the prophecies made. The prophecy said Timothy is going to be a great guy. And now Paul is giving a command to make him, to help him, to become this great guy that God wants him to become. You know, the, if we are always scolding people, scolding, 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 and that's the message that they get, the only message they get from us, it can leave them very impoverished emotionally. Here's this girl, and this is something, that, a scenario that we have seen a lot in our ministry, especially with girls from poor backgrounds whose fathers are alcoholics. Mother is living with severe stress. And so, uh, all the time, the girl is being scolded, scolded, scolded. And then one day in the bus stand, there's a guy who's looking at her in an unusual way. And, um, and she, uh, you know, she likes the looks. She likes uh, having someone looking at her. And then he begins to talk to her. And then he begins to say things that no one has ever said to her. You're so beautiful. I can't, I, I'm, I'm thinking about you all the time. And, and it's a burden that she cannot bear. She resists. She doesn't resist. She gives in. And uh, one day she's in church praying that they, God will use her to change the world. The next day she's missing. And they ask, where is she? Oh, she's run away with this guy. And after a week, she thinks, oh, what a foolish mistake I made. This guy's a drug addict. He's hitting me. And, and she, she just lives to regret her decision. Uh, but, uh, now, now, we are not uh, uh, excusing the girl for what she did. But certainly, her home situation would have helped. Oh, here is this doctor. Works very hard. Treated like a god in the hospital. But not at home a lot of the time. So whenever he comes home, the wife scolds him, scolds him, scolds him. In, office, in, in his workplace, yes, doctor, I'll do that, doctor. You're a wonderful doctor. All the praise. Unconsciously, he begins to want to spend more time at work than at home. And then there is this nurse who gives him so much attention, treats him like a god, and he enters into a relationship with her. Now, again, there is no excuse for this, but it's something that we cannot allow as, uh, as, as Christians. But uh, it could have been avoided if there was affirmation in, uh, in the home. Now, our, our task is to direct people to God's plan for their life. People face so much discouragement. They feel like giving up because of all the competition, the comparison, the bullying, the failures that, uh, to measure up that they have in this world. But Paul told Timothy, in keeping with the prophecies, Timothy, you're going to be a great man and I'm going to help you to become that great man. When we scold them, we don't use words like donkey. You're a shame on the family. You're useless. But we say, God has a wonderful plan for you. I want to help you to become that person. So when we know that there is a great purpose that God has for our people, we will work hard towards that purpose. Because there is this ambition that fires us. God has something great for me. I want to become that. We strive to do well. You know, um, uh, this is a little different to saying you have to come first in class. You know, say there is a class with ten mothers praying, Lord, let my son come first in class. God has a bit of a problem. <laughs> Whose prayer is he going to answer? Uh, that, that type of thinking comes from the competitive world that we live in. No, our prayer is, God has a plan for you. For me, for you. And that's a great plan. Now you work towards that plan. You work and become the great person. You may not be a good student. 
You may not be great at sports, but God has something special for you. And that's a great thing. You become that. So my dear friends, we need to create this atmosphere of joy. And it comes from grace. When grace, uh, we focus on grace, he who began a good work will complete it. So make your home a place of grace. Where grace, what God does, is the thing that, that brings joy. This is why singing is so important uh, in our families. John Wesley said, singing uh, is uh, just like singing is the, uh, uh, as much the language of holy joy as praying is of holy desire. You know, um, when we sing, we remember the great truths of, of, of the faith. Uh, especially singing with our children. I know my, my, my wife used to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, with the children when they went to sleep. So every night they go to sleep with this wonderful truth, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. It, it, it gives people a sense of grace. They go to sleep hearing their father or their mother singing about Jesus. So, may you labor to open doors for grace in your home, to make your home a happy place. Maybe you need to make some decisions today as to how you're going to make your place a more grace-filled place, how you're going to be consciously praising, appreciating, affirming children in addition to rebuking, uh, punishing, and the other things that we are going to do. Let's pray and ask God to help us with this. Thank you, our Father, that you love us. Oh God, how the world tries to convince us that this is not true. How Satan tries to convince us that this is not true. We rebuke Satan. We accept your love and with your love we pray that you will use us to create a loving home where grace rules and people experience the joy knowing that when they come home it's a welcoming place for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
chapter 1 verses 9 to verses 11. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Thank you so much, Dr. Ajit, for that very powerful, empowering message on affirming, celebrating families. And what a great flow from last week. We, have, we had Pastor Roger share about a godly father. Surely God is grabbing our attention to focus on building our families. And don't forget everything that Dr. Ajit shared through his message today. Make sure you pray for your family members, you have thanksgiving, joy and longing towards your family members, that you have confidence in them, in what God has planned and prepared for them, and also focus on grace so you can create a mood of joy where there is celebration and singing that takes place in the family. Now, we are very sure as much as all of us have been blessed, you will have families that you know of that need to hear this message. So would you do this? Would you like our online Sunday celebration? And would you press the share button and share it throughout all the social media platforms you are on so that many people beyond us can be blessed? And don't forget, let's look forward to coming together and worshipping the Lord in person on the 12th of July. Stay tuned also through all social media platforms for more information that we're going to share with you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.